Jill, when and why did you decide to run for town council? Oh, gee, I had to uh, uh, really think on that. Uh, the, the bigger question being why, I guess. But if, uh, if I recall, I think it was about uh, 2012 that um, I was asked to serve on the newly created Pennington Gap IDA. Uh, one of the then uh, council members had decided that it made sense for Pennington Gap to create their own IDA. And from what I understand, it was to allow Pennington to have uh, uh, more leeway in terms of economic development, bringing business in, as opposed to going through the county. So uh, not knowing a whole lot about that, I agreed to do that. So I joined the IDA and uh, through some of the uh, business uh, transactions that were going on through IDA, uh, their uh, problem was created and uh, some of the work that was being done between the IDA and the town council. And that led to a disagreement and trying not being able to come to a meeting of the minds in that situation. And it was then that I felt, well, gee, maybe it would make sense for me to think about running because that was then an election year. And I believe that was 2014. And I thought that maybe I could make a change, make a difference if I sat on the council. So I stepped out there and, and ran for town council and surprisingly enough, got elected, um, got uh, the second highest number of votes, believe it or not. And, uh, um, and have been served, well, I'm in my second year of my second term right now on the council. And uh, just a little background on the council. I'm the only female that sits on the council. And, and as you mentioned, Charles, I'm the vice mayor today. And, uh, and I'm the only person of color that sits on, on the council. And I believe it was in 19, in 19, in 2014, maybe, um, that I uh, was asked to serve on the executive committee of Virginia Municipal League, which uh, uh, I'm doing, I do today. And uh, so that's how I got there. That's what I do. I never expected to be involved in local government like this, but I am. Uh, it's a challenge. And, um, but I, it's a challenge I, I really, Enjoy. I appreciate that, and, and thanks for taking time for that service. That's important. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on in the town today? Some of the things that you're proud of, and things you guys are working on. Well, we've had a lot of things uh, that we were we were really really knee deep in until the virus came. So when I look at what we're doing today and what we're doing uh, uh, five months ago, you know they're pretty different, but um, one of the things that we're really proud of, and that is uh, the restoration of uh, our theater here in, in Pennington. And when you talk to Ron, he can tell you what that used to look like when he was a, a young person growing up in the town of Pennington Gap. But, uh, and this was prior to my getting on council, but um, funds were acquired to uh, allow the town to restore the theater. Uh, I can sit here today and say that that was probably one of the best things that happened in Pennington. People, a lot of people, I guess, were not really uh, excited about that venture, but I would say that the, the theater has turned out to be the catalyst for our, our growth and the growth of our businesses in the community because um, it has drawn a lot of people into the town of Pennington. A lot of the skeptics today will tell you uh, that they really changed their minds about the theater. We work closely with the uh, with Pro Arts. We work closely with the Barter Theater, with our school systems, our local businesses and restaurants. We'll talk about uh, how it, it it helped them and improved on their businesses. Uh, people that work in the restaurants have talked about how their tips have gone sky high as a result of it. And, and again, it has served as a catalyst for much of what has happened 
Uh, we have a park, uh, the name of it is, well, it's called Lehman Field, and I guess it's been around forever. You probably remember Lehman Field, Charles, and uh, the town has invested a lot into uh, uh, Lehman Field, and people come from miles around to go to that park. We um, have an ATV trail, we have an RV park. So people that come in to enjoy those kinds of activities also go to the theater. So it has really served as a catalyst for uh, us, much of the economic development, you know, in the town of Pennington. Uh, since the, um, uh, the virus, uh, I, I, would, I think it's fair to say that Pennington Gap has taken the lead on in, in terms of advising the community, getting the community up to date, keeping the community up to date on what's uh, going on with that. And from the very onset, uh, we contacted the uh, health department and we're put in touch with uh, uh, Dr. Suki Antrell, uh, and she's with the, well, she's over the health department, so Department for Lena Wisco and um, Lena Wisco Planning District. And uh, we had her on our local radio show. Now we have uh, our local radio uh, station broadcasts from the theater every Monday morning with updates to the community. Dr. Cantrell uh, um, participates in that as she can and uh, gives us uh, updates and keeps us uh, informed of what's going on with COVID and the, and the changes as the governor passes them down. Um, we've worked closely with the county and actually keep, have been able to keep the county abreast of what's going on with, with uh, COVID. Um, we've uh, been talking about the CARES Act funds that have come to uh, our communities uh, to allow us to, uh, to use that money to help us through the situation. Um, we've used some of that money to give out masks and uh, hand sanitizers to all of our businesses in the town, town of Pennington. Um, all of our council members, all of us have uh, received laptops so that we can uh, uh, meet uh, virtually. We have our, our council meetings virtually. Uh, we've redone our, our, uh, our office, our we put in um, all kinds of safety mechanisms within our offices to protect uh, our employees. We were allowed to get computers for our employees, some of our employees to work from home. Um, so all of that money has been really helpful to us and, and to the community and we look for other ways in which to, uh, to use it. We're actually in negotiations right now with um, with uh, our court system. Uh, and I think all of us, well, for us, I can't say all of us, but our uh, judges are looking for a means by which to hold uh, any trials that they may have and hold them, you know, safely. Our courthouse does not have the space to allow for social distancing and that kind of thing. So how can we help them through that? And again, here comes the theater where we do have the space and perhaps that could be a way for which to help them and that CARES Act money would, would help us do that. Um, aside from the, the, the virus, we did have in place, uh, uh, and this is a big project that we're talking about and we will resume it, and that is a barriers-free playground for children with disabilities and, and not just restricted to children with disabilities, but for, for everyone, for everyone to use, but specifically for the use of children who are limited. And um, so we've been working on raising money for that. We organized uh, about two years ago, a group with, that's called the Pennington Partners. And this was in response to our not having an active chamber of commerce here in Lee County. So we thought about how can or what can we do to fill that gap? And, we, and working with Virginia, some folks from Virginia Tech, we came up with the idea of organizing a community group, which we have uh, coined Pennington Partners. 
and they work with us in Pennington and help us uh, uh, fulfill some of the uh, 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 things that events that we would like to see happen. They get involved in cleaning projects uh, throughout the town. They've gotten grant money to install uh, cigarette receptacles throughout throughout the town. They've um, actually hosted a, a, a triathlon last summer, which we had hoped we could do this year, but again, because of the virus, we weren't able to. So they've been very active in what they can do to help support us. And as part of that uh, fundraising activity for our, for the uh, park, uh, park, they've, you know, uh, donated funds from the last year's triathlon toward that toward that goal. So that uh, Pennington Partners is something that, that we're really proud of. And um, we just and we just recently installed our Virginia Love sign and we're we're proud of that. We got uh, uh, grant money to do that. So we continue to move forward. Um, we hopefully will find ourselves in a situation where our Small businesses will be able to survive this. Um, we are working with DHCD with grant money that we've applied for where uh, perhaps we can uh, help some of our businesses make it through this. Um, and, uh, and we did get a grant also that uh, will allow us to set up stations for um, businesses well people who are looking to get their their businesses off the ground um and we would be able to provide them space for training and that kind of it's just like a small business incubator kind of situation so we did get funding for that so we have a lot of things that are out there uh we see pennington as being really progressive we're proud of the uh, uh headway that we're making. We're proud of our town manager. We work on, you know, Keith, and uh, uh, he's done a fine job of making things happen. And we hope that, you know, we'll just continue to do this as best we can through the virus. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, I know a lot of the, the members of the Institute of Government are struggling just as Pennington Gap has on how to adapt with everything with the coronavirus and COVID-19. So. I appreciate you sharing what you guys have been doing to try to uh, help that, and also appreciate the you know, the importance of the investment you all made in your downtown with the theater. I think that's proven time and time again. But reinvesting in downtowns is uh, is very important for towns and cities throughout the Commonwealth. 